Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. Today, being that it's Monday, seminarian will give the reflection. This week, it's Brian, which will be very, very good. We always enjoy when Brian speaks. Yay. Anyway, around here is cloudy. It's kind of warm. Not very interesting at the moment. Last night, we had a wonderful time watching the moon. We saw it. It happened. <laughs> but otherwise, hey, it's Monday morning. And life is good. As we always do, let's begin with our prayer. Regina Celi, Letare, Alleluia, Quia Quemeruisti Portare, Alleluia, Resurrexit Sicutixit, Alleluia, Ora pro nobis Deum. Alleluia. Rejoice and be glad, O Virgin Mary. Alleluia. For the Lord has truly risen. Alleluia. Let us pray. O God, who gave joy to the world through the resurrection of thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, grant, we beseech thee, that through the intercession of the Virgin Mary, his mother, we may obtain the joys of everlasting life. Through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Great. <clears throat> good times. Yeah, it's Monday and it's cloudy now. It's going to be raining, I think, a little bit tonight. Who knows? A little tiny, tiny bit. Anyway, May is delightful. Hey, let's just dig in. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. May your right hand, O Lord, we pray, encompass your family with perpetual help so that defended from all wickedness by the resurrection of your only begotten Son, we may make our way by means of your heavenly gifts. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. There was an attempt in Iconium by both the Gentiles and the Jews, together with their leaders, to attack and stone Paul and Barnabas. They realized it and fled to Lyconian cities of Lystra and Derbe and to the surrounding countryside where they continue to proclaim the good news. At Lystra, there was a crippled man, lame from birth, who had never walked. He listened to Paul speaking who looked intently at him, saw that he had the faith to be healed, healed and called out in a low, loud voice. Stand up straight on your feet. He jumped up and began to walk about. When the crowd saw what Paul had done, they cried out in Lycaconian, the gods have come down to us in human form. They called Barnabas, Zeus, and Paul, Hermes, because he was the chief speaker. And the priest of Zeus, whose temple was at the entrance to the city, brought oxen and garlands to the gates, for he, together with the people, intended to offer sacrifice. The apostles Barnabas and Paul tore their garments when they heard this and rushed out to the crowd, shouting, men, why are you doing this? We are the same nature as you, human beings. We proclaim to you good news that you should turn from these idols to the living God who made heaven and earth and sea and all that is in them. In past generations, he allowed all Gentiles to go their own ways. Yet in bestowing his goodness, he did not leave himself without witness for he gave you rains from heaven and fruitful seasons, and filled you with nourishment and gladness for your hearts. Even with these words, they scarcely restrained the crowds from offering sacrifice to them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Not to us, O Lord, but to your name give glory. Not to us, O Lord, but to your name give the glory. Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name give glory because of your mercy, because of your truth. 
Why should the pagans say, where is their God? Not to us, O Lord, but to your name give the glory. Our God is in heaven. Whatever he wills, he does. Their idols are silver and gold, the handiwork of men. Not to us, O Lord, but to your name give the glory. May you be blessed by the Lord who made heaven and earth. Heaven is the heaven of the Lord, but the earth he has given to the children of men. Not to us, O Lord, but to your name give the glory. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Spirit will teach you everything and remind you of all I told you. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. Whoever loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and reveal myself to him. Judas, not the Iscariot, said to him, Master, then what happened that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered and said to him, Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the father who sent me. I have told you this while I am with you, the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. He will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. All right, being Monday, we will hear from our seminarian for the reflection. So, Brian, take it away. All right. Hey, guys. Good morning. Um, I just want to say real quick that I am excited to do this again. It's been a while and it's always kind of fun. It's uh, very much a fun thing to do. Um, so in this in the readings today, it's a pretty interesting. Um, it, it's pretty interesting how both of them kind of interact with each other. And I kind of want to talk about that. I'm going to start, though, with the gospel, which is an incredibly uh, dense passage because it's relatively short, but almost each line you can spend all day on. Um, and this is, we, we kind of get a first look or glimpse into Trinitarian doctrine as spoken by Christ himself, which is, this is a very, making this passage so important. And we see how the Trinity operates kind of in our both, uh, in both our inner being and our outer experience. And we ultimately will see the importance of faith. But um, before we get into all of that, we have to start with the love of Christ, that is the love for Christ. Um, he says, whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. And so this is kind of an interesting thing right here, because now we have wh whoever knows my commandments and observes them. We have this kind of uh, twofold thing of love, which is knowledge and action. They're working in tandem with each other. You can't have one without the other. We, love, uh, we show our love for Christ by our works, um, that is our actions. Um, and yes, included in these are the outward signs of love that we know, you know, uh, charity, giving to the poor, almsgiving, and all the, any number of these kinds of actions. But also included is our inner dispositions and our alignment with God. Like in what ways do we put God first in our lives and in what ways do we keep him there? That very much is kind of an active and a kind of a good work thing as well. Um, these are also the kinds of actions that are required to, you know, to kind of show and to prove to us that we do love Christ. But knowledge is also important because we need to have knowledge of what God is saying to us. And this doesn't necessarily mean academic knowledge. I'm at I think it was Thomas Akempis who famously said, I'd rather know, I'd rather feel contrite than know what contrition is. Um, it's, that's something I definitely agree with, but that contrition is still a kind of knowledge of what God's will is. So we need to keep ourselves informed by a constant return to scripture, constant return to prayer and have God be able to operate in us. And so 
next. So whoever loves Christ will be dwelt in by the Father and the Son. Um, Christ says in a pretty interesting line here because he says, and my Father will love him, um, which is an interesting phrase because it, it almost seems like he's saying, well, he doesn't love us now. But as mentioned earlier, love is action. It's a very active thing. And similarly, the human soul is meant to receive love. That is what it's for. That is how it, that it's part of its very substance, its very being. So we have to keep it able to receive. We have to make sure it's in a good shape to receive the love of God. So when it is said, and my father will love him, that, that's kind of what is meant, that the soul that is able to receive will be acted upon by God, who will take up his dwelling, both father and son, um, in him. And Father and Son, by the way, the only thing that's missing right now is the Holy Spirit, which what he, what we get to next. Um, he, Christ says another interesting phrase. He says, I told you this while I am with you. The Holy Spirit will teach you everything. Christ tells the Holy Spirit teaches. It's kind of a weird um, thing that's going on there. But um, first of all, this is very great for us. Because the Holy Spirit is always with us. We are working up to Pentecost, um, and as in, which is where the endowment of uh, the church was endowed with the Holy Spirit, who has guided us and kept us and directed us through, you know, into our third millennium now since Christ. Um, and these readings are kind of reflecting us and getting or, or reflecting that and getting us ready for Pentecost. But again, we kind of see an inner and outer dichotomy. Christ says, he will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. Christ tells us that the Holy Spirit teaches us, all right? So Christ tells us, Holy Spirit teaches. And I'm sure we can kind of relate to this because how many times have we had or have we read Proverbs or any of the sayings of Christ that we just simply don't understand right off the bat? We hear them. We have the outer experience of hearing them being told to us. But until we take time to really retreat into ourselves and reflect and meditate on these words, that's where the Holy Spirit comes in and teaches us what these words mean and teaches us the fruits that we are to get from the teachings of, of, of the sayings of Jesus. So we start to see the workings of the Trinity but, um, and how they kind of operate in our lives. And, um, but being here, human, all of our uh, talking of Trinity is always going to be imperfect. So we can't really have like these really purified forms of Holy Spirit teaches and only teaches, Christ tells and only tells, you know, God creates and only sustains or only creates, whatever, or God the Father that is. Now, all these things are like interacting with each other. So it's kind of an interesting uh, thing to meditate on and to ponder for, you know, the rest of eternity. So now um, turning to the selection from Acts, this story was always kind of humorous to me because it's how quickly it just goes insane. I'm sure it was pretty terrifying at the moment, but it's just how quickly the guys are like bring out the oxen and are ready to just like, let's go, we're gonna offer sacrifice. I mean, they're gonna slaughter those oxen. And so it's just like, wow, just like right off the bat, ready to go. But, um, and, but we kind of see, we kind of see what, what Christ is getting at with loving him, who keeping those commandments, and loving him and keeping him first. And we see these in the two characters that aren't Paul and Barnabas. And one of the characters is the man who's healed himself. The other character is the crowd as one character. Um, when it happened, when the healing happened, the man who was healed simply got up and walked. He did not confuse Paul and Barnabas for Hermes and Zeus. He did not start to worship them, but the crowd saw that and started to worship them and said, um, started to call them Hermes and Zeus. And it's like, you know, these are the gods made incarnate, which is kind of an interesting thing. But because they did not have love in Christ, love for Christ in the way that the man did, remember, Paul saw in this man the faith that he had, that love of Christ, that faith that he had. And that's how he knew he was able to be healed through Christ, or through the hands of Paul, but like ultimately Christ doing the action. The people who saw this and attributed it all to Paul and Barnabas were, um, did not have that inner faith. They did not have that inner love, but it is interesting that they called them Zeus and Hermes. Hermes, as you may know, is the messenger God. Zeus is the God of gods. And it's kind of interesting that you have this, uh, to this, this kind of conceit in their thinking because Christ is a revelation of God, 
but Christ is also a messenger. He's not a mere messenger, obviously. He's not just a messenger, but he does. He is a messenger. He has the message. It is the good news after all. Um, and so you kind of see this, how the soul is built to receive this love of God, to kind of be able to accept this uh, love of God, but it simply needs the faith. It simply needs faith in order to do that. This morning in his homily, Father Gray talked about the, the, the importance of praying for faith for other people and the spreading of faith. And we see that like th there's nothing to say that these people didn't eventually turn around and were converted to Christ um, and were converted to Christianity. But it's kind of an interesting thing because like just in this story right here, it's a good example of how you can almost hear the words of Christ, just like they saw Paul and Barnabas heal, but they don't necessarily understand the teaching of what's really there. They don't understand the lesson. They were not taught by the Holy Spirit in the way that the man who was healed was. <clears throat> and um, so we kind of see how the Trinity, how Christ explains the Trinity in, his, in an interesting way, how we can, you know, Christ, we can hear the words of Christ, but it's, uh, and, but it's the Holy Spirit that teaches us. So Christ tells, the Holy Spirit teaches and then we see this interesting dichotomy in the, um, the book of Acts with the man who was healed and the crowd who responds in a very you know, inappropriate way. But even in that response, you kind of see like, even with the calling of them Zeus and Hermes, we see how like the human soul is kind of geared toward God, is even geared toward a Trinitarian God. Um, but it requires faith in order to uh, to understand that. And faith is a gift. It is a grace from God, which is why it's important to pray that faith is spread. All right. That is all I have to say on that today. I hope that I hope that wasn't confusing. Um, but yeah, if it was confusing, just ask me questions and then I can answer. Thank you. No, it is important to pray for faith. <clears throat> Often people say like, ah, I'm struggling with my faith or other things where it's a spiritual gift that they're looking for and they kind of worry about it. They just sit there with the worry and feel pretty, you know, um, kind of without any power to do anything about it. Well, the truth is these are spiritual gifts. So use spiritual tools, ha ha. <laughs> it seems a, a little bit, you know, maybe trite, but no, these are things that we should pray for. Anyway. Cool. As we always do, let's bring our prayers together now and offer them to the Lord that he will hear and answer us. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for our Bishop Oscar, and for all bishops, that through the intercession of Our Lady of the Rosary, they will be protected from all evil. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church that we may overcome all adversity and grow ever deeper in relationship with our Redeemer. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community, that in this springtime, we give thanks to God for all of his creation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, that there be peace among all nations, especially Ukraine. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for who and what else shall we pray? For the intercession of St. Monica, for all our friends and families, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gathering all our prayers into one, let us offer them in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whose grace, though sinners, we are made just, and though pitiable, made blessed. Stand, we pray, by your gift works, stand by your gifts that those justified by faith may not lack the courage of perseverance. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Great. Let's keep praying. 
Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, the eyes of mercy toward us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, our refuge and our strength, look down in mercy on your people who cry to you. And by the intercession of the glorious and immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of God, of St. Joseph, her spouse, of your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, and of all the saints, in mercy and goodness, hear our prayers for the conversion of sinners and for the liberty and exaltation of our Holy Mother and Church. Through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Fantastic. Thank you all for joining us. Clarence, you're looking good. Thank you all for being here from wherever you are. We'll be here tomorrow. We'll do it. It'll be great. Enjoy your Monday. God bless. Bye-bye.